Carnival Cruise Lines has promised to reimburse passengers for the trip and transportation home. It's also offering credit for a future cruise, plus $500. But at least one passenger on that disabled, horrible trip from hell has already filed suit over the conditions, claiming she suffered physical and emotional harm during her time on board the Triumph. A number of Miami-based attorneys also reporting they have firms and they have received, quote, quite a few inquiries from passengers. Joining us now, attorneys Anahita Setagatfar and Regina Tombinakis. Good to see you both. Thanks for being with us. Thank Regina, you. I want to start with you. The stories are plentiful about the nightmare people suffered on board the Triumph. If you're representing the cruise line, what's your defense against lawsuits? Listen, when you take a cruise and you're hundreds of miles in the middle of the ocean, things can happen. This is not without risks. Carnival reimbursed them, paid for their expenses, paid for any of the money they had spent on there, got them home, paid for their hotel, and paid, gave them an extra 500. They, that was the most that Carnival could do. You cannot say you're going to get on a ship and nothing's going to happen. You can get on a plane and it's going to crash. It's an inherent risk. And that is what happened. But they tried to make it, what, make it up to the people that were on there as best that they could. So I think they're going to have a hard time suing. Nobody died. Nobody had serious injuries. One person was airlifted with dialysis. It was horrible. Yes. Wow. But I they don't should think hire you. That's a lawsuit. Your, your tough argument wow. right there. Uh, Anahita, you're a passenger. You just got off that ship and you want to sue. <laughs> okay. Who has a good case and who doesn't? Well, the passengers certainly have a good case. Look, you know, uh, cruise ships owe a duty of care to their passengers to keep them safe. Can you imagine? These passengers are paying for a vacation, a relaxing, nice, safe trip, and they get five days, no food, no electricity, sleeping in on floors and mattresses covered in feces. You know, and I think what's going to be critical here is that this, there are reports at least, that this cruise liner had notice that there could have been problems uh, with this particular fire. And to offer them $500 and a discount on another cruise, Harris, really? Do you think these passengers are ever going to go on another cruise again? Well, because I know some of these passengers are possibly watching us, I do want to say one thing. They did have food. At one point, they were talking about rationing it. Uh, Regina, what are some things Carnival should not do or say at this point? Well, I think Carnival at this point should be focusing on getting everybody home making sure everybody's taken care of. If anybody has actually suffered an actual physical injury that is more than what they're doing, then maybe on an individual basis that can be looked at. But that's what Carnival needs to be doing right now. They need to be trying to fix the situation and you know what, maybe retire the ship. But again, it is with its risks. There can be a storm, you've heard of rogue waves, anything can happen out there. You can't expect that you're gonna go on a cruise and you're guaranteed safety. I can't guarantee that I'm gonna get on the highway tomorrow or right now and I'm guaranteed safety. It is a risk. Well, you know, you, you talk about how liable or how liable not Carnival is. Uh, Regina, they did sign something, these people, so what does it say? They did sign something that is waiving some liability, but also this cruise is not, I mean, they didn't pay a lot of money for this cruise either. You want a bargain, but yet you want all the securities that you're going to have to pay for with a high price cruise, let's all right, just say. All right, I want to step so, in. Anna, Anna Hita, just to, yeah. because we're going to run out of time, I want to give you a chance to say this. Uh, she's laying out an interesting case. I don't know if they didn't pay a lot per ticket. I, I think that's a personal thing. $50 might be a lot for the experience they just had. Uh, I know you've looked into the history of this. What is the first thing Anahita that people need to do if they want to sue? What, what should they be doing right now? Well, I definitely, I disagree first off with your other guests that a cruise ship can somehow absolve themselves from liability simply by having these passengers sign a 15-page contract. That's what we call a contract of adhesion. And I don't see any court enforcing those types of clauses. Um, I think these passengers certainly, if they've been damaged, which many of them, I believe, feared for their lives, reasonably so, should certainly consult with an attorney and try to be compensated for the harm that they sustained. It's irrelevant how much they paid for these tickets. At the end of the day, the cruise ship is liable. They're responsible to keep these passengers that are in their custody and control safe. All right, Anahita, Regina, thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank we'll you see very what much. happens as those lawsuits have already begun.